All right, so first hand, we have the cutoff open. I'm in the big room with ace king, 17 blinds deep. All in is the play for anybody that doesn't know that. Going to be jamming, you know, something like king queen here, some small pocket pairs. He calls a7 suited, but just a bit on the looser side and fucking hits it on the river. I was pretty tilted at that moment. I, rem I remember. I want to go into the fine table of this bounty tournament with the chip lead, but I still came in with the chip lead, but not that many chips. Started off with a bit of a loose open here, 6 5 suit under the gun. I thought I covered enough people to go for it. And then I decided to go for a C bet. Now, now, now has a pretty strong range here. We have the gut shot. And, you know, if he has a hand like King Queen of Clubs, he might just fold. I set up a turn barrel to make him fold King Queen, Ace Jack type stuff. But he obviously has a bunch of strong pocket pairs as well and some traps. So on the turn, I pick up additional equity. And it seems like a good spot to double barrel now, as I said, get the folds from Ace Jack, King Queen. Um, I don't plan to fold out pocket nines here or snow plate aces, right? Um, half pot set up a good river jam as well, makes sense. And bink. Now, I don't think he has too many flushes. He has pocket hands, so he might not jam pre flop. And he can have hand like king queen of hearts, ace jack of hearts, but that's pretty much it ace queen of hearts, maybe. So, um, all in is to play and hope he makes a call with the pocket nines or, you know, an ace ten of spades. Slow play aces. Obviously, a bunch of my backdoors get there, so uh, it's not a spot where I have too many bluffs, but I just take it down. And here we are. Somebody busted in the meanwhile. Now we have the short stack here with the bounty coming in with the min race and a three bet from middle position. I figured that range was quite wide, and looking at the button bounty, that bounty is huge. <laughs> you see me pointing there with the mouse. I knew I was going to record this, so the bounty looks pretty good there compared to everything else. And with the ladders, I just decided to go for it. Be aggressive, most likely behind against Chewy, but I think player 555 has quite a wide range and just went for the bounty hunt here. Two bounties on the line. Up against Ace King, Spade. Nope. I said out Spade out loud while I was um, doing this. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Ace Queen 24 blinds. I figured with the ICM implications, I wasn't sure if I wanted to raise and just went for the open jam. And. Small blind with a quick call there, a bit worried, but has the pocket nines, we have to flip, easy queen, classic German style, goodbye. <laughs> it's kind of funny doing this commentary afterwards, it's kind of nice to relive it, because this happened, as I said, a few days ago. And lots of money up top, um, good run, it's nice to not forget those, jam it, booty, ace, fuck. And 700 bucks, I was keen to get that bounty, and that's the second opportunity I missed, with pocket tens to make up for it. In we go, 16 blinds, nothing um, too exciting here. Pew. How do you like the sound effects? <laughs> now we have the ace check off suit. Um, once again, 19 blinds. Race is fine. I, I just don't mind just going for it pre flop here, avoiding the regems by deuces, and um, save myself some ease. Thank you. Some dumb spots again against the big blind as well. Nice little ace on the turn. The ace is always coming. And here we are now. Second out of five. Good stack. Ready to play. Ace and suited against the big blind. Beautiful flop. Let's go for a little third pot seabed here. Performing quite well. Calls. Turn is to three. He obviously has a bunch of three X, but with the bounty, we just want to go for all the chips. Um, so, yes, yeah, there's plenty of weaker 10 X you might not raise and 6 X. So, I decided to. Bet the turn again and set up a good river jam. He jams. Has a six. Nice. <laughs> I was waiting not to see the three. Just goes with the six. And hey, life's good. Chip lead and get the bounty. Then pot now. 20 blinds deep. Um, I figured this guy wouldn't trap enough. So I just jammed a bunch. And worked out. Good stuff. I have the king jack. Oh, the bounty looks good. And a small blind. He lost the pot. Got a bit shorter. But I just have to... Defend against the Yoink guy again. S what I just noticed, what you don't see in the highlights really, this guy was very, very active. Okay, so I'm not sure what's happening in his hand, but I'm just saying this. Seabed's half pot, we obviously continue. Um, with the call, turn us to six. I don't think we need to donk this hand, just gonna check and try to navigate to showdown. If we see a turn bet, spot gets a bit dicey, but he just checks it back. A little block bet on the river, give myself a cheap price on my plus with 10-9. He still has some check X that he might bet on the flop, even though for half pot, might not do it. Get it done. Ace check in the mix now, 40. With the short stack, 
on the button. I didn't really want to just jam here, so I decided to go with the flat. See how that works out for me. And Big Ben and Tank. I mean, if he jams, I would have to call, but he goes for this weird squeeze, and I figured I would just get it in against it anyhow, because as I said, Yoink was active. Um, if I just call, Spot plays a bit weirdly. Uh, he might get there with the, I don't know, King Six offsuit, or yeah, as I said, I'm out of position, and as I, I would have called the jam. Now he has still some bluffs that might fold, so I just went for the all-in. And here there is Jack himself, which I was quite surprised by. I would always just jam that and not go for this weird squeeze, but sure, we chop it up. Player with the double, up to 3 million again. Now I have the sixes once again, 36 big blinds. I was always in a spot where I wanted to exploit Yoink. I just didn't have the opportunity to do so. There was always somebody in the middle, somebody short, that didn't make the spot too appealing, or I was just too deep stack here with 37 blinds. On the flop, I decided to check raise my hand. If he just falls the 7 8 of diamonds or 7 8 of hearts, life is great. Um, so yeah, I just decided to go for the raise. Have a few slow plays as well, and obviously some do sex as well, but not heaps. But so does he. Opening the check turn off suit here. Cut off pretty standard. Big bang quite short. Ooh. Must be what? Cheers. Goodbye. <laughs> just go for it, goes for the open jam. I mean, I have some hands like ace twos that just have to fold now. And if I bet and he jams, I might not fold them anymore because I'm priced in. Get the walk with a seven, and now I'm sitting on 10 million here, three handed. Oh, it's so nice to look at this again. This is a good one. Right now I'm guaranteed 2,700. Collected 12, uh, actually like 2k in bounce or something. So already like 4.5k, 5k score for me at this point. Feels great. I mean, compared with my bounties to those two guys, pathetic what they have. Um, just standard call here with Ace by Suited. If you think somebody's active, you can also rip it in. But plays pretty well as a call as well. <whistles> Baby. Um, versus C bet here, I can do both call or fold. Against the check, I can do both check or bet. I figured if he has a check jam here with kings, we're loving life. We're the favorite to win the hand. He still has some ace king that might float the flop, sevens that might fold the turn. So I just decided to go with the bet and decided to do a bunch of limping because the, the short stack was quite short in a small blind. So if I raise in a big blind champs, I just have to fold a lot. So I started implementing a limping range. Which obviously includes a lot of ASEX, and since those two guys would probably ice a lot of ASEX pre, I just decided to, you know, follow that strategy. Now I get raised, and I'm like, what are you representing? You don't have fours, you don't have sixes, I don't think you have too many ASEX. So I just decided to go for the float. A little wide, but that's what you do. Turn is the king. Now I figured, hey, I mean, this guy probably has a bunch of 6x, so that he just wants to raise for protection. So let's try to make him fold that. So I go for the small bet. And now to reverse the check, and as I said, I think he has a bunch of 6x, so I just want to check it back. But he goes for this donk now for 40%. I'm like, what the fuck are you representing? And make the call, and he turns the 6 into bluff on the river. I think that's a really nice hero call on my end, because as I said, once that check hits, he realizes he loses now to the queen check float, so just bluffs, and yeah, that was cool. And he busts now with the queen 3. I am in the heads up against Yoink. Let's see if I take down the whole tournament. Oh my god, so exciting. What will happen? I, I really don't know. <laughs> um, defend the king three. Oh, three bet. I mean, sure. The king three offsuit. Get that full preflop. He was obviously raising a lot in a small blind. He calls. It's the flop you never want to see when you're three betting from the big blind. <laughs> and I have king three offsuit. So I just, just decided to check fold. Don't be a hero. Some bots are just so bad that... It's time to say goodbye. That's what I decided to do here. I mean, on the turn, yeah, maybe I can make him fold a hand like ace 10 if I go big twice. But it's just such a spot where he has a lot of hands, lots of draws that are just good. And just giving up is fine, I believe. So now it was a bit shorter. Open the 8-7. Oof. Backdoor draw. Open Mender. Coming with the c bet. Seems pretty reasonable. I got the strong king X, the sets that he doesn't have, the two pairs that he sometimes three bets. So he raises me now. I mean, I'm continuing. Let's hit that nine. Let's hit that four. Turns a six of hearts. Quite interesting. I mean, not too many six X that he check raises down the flop, if any. That aren't two pair hands that make a bolt now. He continues for a third pot. 
I think at this point he might have like a king axe or something, like a 7-4 offsuit with a heart, maybe hand like queen check with a heart. Um, since I think I have to redraw equity and I can just bluff myself on the river, if he checks, I call it. And obviously I'm the guy that has all the 6 x now because I bet call him on the flop as well. Reverse the 9 of hearts, I make the flush and as I said he might have like queen check with a heart here or queen 10 with a heart. So when he checks I just decide to take my showdown value, he has king 10, I think that's reasonably played. You can also check the turn here, now pocket 10s, 37 blinds, a very easy 3 bet, feeling pretty happy here. So 3 bet it is. Goes all in with ace queen offsuit, I call with the pocket 10s, ace in the flop, 4 for the chop, nope. I lose the flip to lose the heads up and I finish second in the end for 6,500 bucks. Pretty decent result, obviously heads up was big, first place was around $10,000 for me. But this is how bounty builders work sometimes and I definitely got lucky enough to get into this spot. So I hope you enjoyed this little bit of a different video, but I wanted to bring this run to you. I thought there were some interesting hands in there and I hope you enjoyed it as well. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.